Hello, this is Gio Palermo once again. We have ourselves another episode of the Evo Lounge. Today, we have ourselves a very special guest, a man who's been around the world and back. This is my friend, my neighbor, David Vo. David, how are you doing today? Good, man. I'm good. All right. Yeah. So I just recently heard that you got back from Iceland. Yeah, man. How long ago was that? Yeah, I think that was like four days ago. Four days ago. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I was there for a week. A and, week. Uh, yeah, it was all of uh, yeah about a week. Eight eight days. Okay. Nice. Nice. What was that for? Uh, it was for fun, man. Just for fun. Oh, just a recreational trip. Yeah. Yeah. I nice. Just had to get out somewhere. All right. Yeah. Then tell me about it. Then I guess. All right, man. Well, I'll start from the beginning because usually the first question I get from people is like, "Why Iceland?" You know, cause like, yeah, yeah. I could have gone to like Hawaii, or like I could have gone back to Japan, um, but I picked Iceland for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is because I like cold, and second, oh. the second reason is because Vikings, man. Vikings, yeah, man. yeah. I was watching a documentary probably like two years ago of these like strong men in iceland lifting like these big like heavy oh stones. i've seen those yeah, yeah like yeah. the contests where yeah, like they, they lift contests. the stones and yeah, see how yeah. big they can get That's yeah the one. Um, were you interested in trying that out or i did actually so that was oh, one of the things okay. that i actually did in iceland was go and find these famous stones like mm-hmm. they're natural stones like not made by humans they're like spheres kind of like right well, that's the thing like in strongman like the sport of strongman there's mm-hmm. different types of stones you have atlas stones which are the round ones oh yeah that are man-made like people cast like concrete into molds and right. get these perfectly spherical uh, stones but the stones that i was watching these like huge man lift were natural stones so like made by boulders yeah, and stuff yeah, okay they're, like not symmetrical they're like oddly shaped they're not perfectly round um, but apparently in the old days, the fishermen and probably Viking before that were probably bored and they were like, Hey man, I challenge you to lift that stone. Let's see if you can lift the stone. And if you lifted it to prove that I was stronger, I'd lift a heavier stone than you. Yeah. The flexing just, yeah, contests. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was kind of cool. That, that aspect of like strength and mm-hmm. in Viking culture. Right. Um, right. And also the nature, too, that kind of drew me to Iceland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Iceland's got some nice nature. Were you, were you there just for, like, um, only Viking stuff? Or what What else did you go there for? Um, just the nature. Like, to okay. be honest, like, a lot of Iceland is very... Like, Iceland is a part of the EU. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. a, it's a European country, obviously. But it's so different, I think, than, like, Europe, like, proper in that it's very influenced by American culture. Like, they really? drive on the right side of the road, just like we do. Oh, um, wow. Okay. When you think of Europe, you think of, like, brick roads and, like, nice, like... Well, not really nice, but kind of old-ish old apartment fashion, buildings. Like, yeah, you know, architecture, everywhere. yeah. People got style, right? Mm-hmm. But in Iceland, they're just like us. Like, they're like normal people. Really? Okay. There's no, like giants and it's like americanized kind of in the culture fast food places everywhere and was that like a big shock to you were you expecting something different i was yeah i was expecting like giant people like (laughs) like vikings like like Like, yeah okay i definitely saw some but it wasn't like everybody Mm -hmm. they're just people like me and you like right right working um they're really into like farming and fishing yeah but there's yeah. like they have like h&m i saw h&m there they have subway oh. they have like all the things that we do that's you very know, modernized then malls. yeah yeah they're not like totally different they're just like mm-hmm. yeah. well okay when it comes to traveling though i do know that you're very well versed in your activities around the world what would you say in your experience is the biggest culture shock that you've experienced over the past few years mm. if you had to say i probably have to say Going to Japan. Japan was a big culture shock. Japan, okay. Yeah, Japan. I can understand why, but would you like to go a little bit more in depth with that? Yeah, man. Uh, So Japan, um, you know, like the anime and like the samurai, like movies. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, like seems really cool and all that. 
but when you actually get to Japan, like it's so different from from here. That was the that was the biggest culture shock, probably because of like the pace of the Japanese. Japan people. is really fast paced. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fast, and their population is like insane. It's like huge. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like, in their cities, like Tokyo, because um, we landed in Tokyo. They have like this huge population crammed into like a super like relatively yeah, small yeah. area. And you see everything's going up. Yeah. So many tall buildings and yeah. all that. You've yeah. probably seen uh, videos of like these guys like that work at the SkyTrain station just like shoving people in. Right. I have seen those train. videos. Yeah. yeah. That's the real thing. That's the real right, thing. Right. Right. Because like, yeah. I actually went to Japan right. um, recently in the summer as well and I did notice that too many different things i saw in particular on the trains the the women only cars mm. that's something that i took note of and i thought was really interesting as well but to you what we what do you think was the biggest change in pace because people are mm. fast people are going everywhere did you get yourself caught up in there a little bit or were you trying mm. just to take things a bit slow yeah i think because we had like the the purpose of going to Japan was just to chill out, like, right? Just, like, right. Find a place somewhere different, away from home, and you know, just kind of have an adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for us, just to coming from like our culture here and going there and seeing like how they operate, um, it was easy just to like be a foreigner because it's so obvious that you are a foreigner. Yeah. And you don't fit in, and it was it was totally cool. Um, yeah, I didn't really get caught up in in that. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. What was your favorite part about Japan then? You said with the mm. Iceland, it was the uh, the Vikings and yeah. the boulders. What about Japan? Um, I would say the food. Yeah, Japan. Uh, yeah. food is so good. Japanese um, cuisine. Yeah, like I think a lot of what we think is Japanese food like here, like we only think we have like sushi, ramen. What else do we have? That's like, like that's like pretty much tonkatsu it, right? and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, Japanese cuisine is actually a lot more diverse than people hmm. think it is. Like a traditional like Japanese like meal is actually made of a lot of different parts. It's not like I did. I have noticed yeah. that. Yeah, like the bento boxes and stuff. Yeah, 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 many different things. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably why they have longer lifespans too. Is because they have like. They okay. balance like all these dishes. Yeah, and so many different things. A lot of fish. That's a good too. idea. Yeah, a lot of fish. There is a lot of fish. Yeah, um, but yeah, I would say food, man. It's food is just so good. You try the uh, convenience store. Oh yeah. Food as well. Every day we had convenience store at least one meal at the convenience store every single day. That's good. That's yeah, great. For like yeah. thirty days. Yeah. For thirty, d- you were there for a month. Yeah. I was there wow, for a month. that's yeah. crazy. It was nice. Were you guys only just in the Tokyo region, or did you? Mm. Go we outwards. In, uh, I think we were in uh, Osaka was the first place that we went to, and we were there for ten days. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then we hopped over to Nara, which is like a, it's a smaller like yeah, village yeah. kind of thing, uh, for two days, and then we did uh, Kyoto for ten days, another ten days, and then we went back to Tokyo like through a night bus we stayed there for the last seven days a night bus okay yeah. wow what, yeah, was, what was that was. like um so they actually have really cool like transport like for everybody in japan which is one of the things that, are, that i'm really envious of that we don't have here because we're supposed to be advanced right we're Western yeah culture. yeah um but honestly man like you can go anywhere they have their own like airlines like within Japan, you can fly from city to another city for like fifty bucks. That's Whereas not like bad. Here for yeah. us, you have to pay like three hundred bucks just to go to Toronto or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have night buses where there's like they're outfitted with like beds and everything. You could pass out for like ten hours and then wake up and you'd be in the next city. You know those kind of things. Yeah. And you know there are bullet trains and things. I like that. actually did take the bullet train when I went to Japan. Nice. We went from Tokyo yeah. to Osaka, yeah. passed along through Nagoya along the way, but. Nice. Yeah, that's really awesome to hear. So do you think the biggest improvement here would be the uh, transit system if you were to compare it to Japan? Yeah, Yeah, man. I think um, here, I don't know if money is a thing, Mm -hmm. but honestly, like seeing what's possible and people are doing it like on the other side of the world. 
if they can do it, why can't we do it here? Right. Right. And we have a smaller population. So yeah, we, we do totally, have a smaller population. Like, expand our our transit system for sure. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. that was a great talk. I guess that concludes our episode here of Evo Lounge. This was David Vo, a good friend, a good neighbor of mine. For Revolution 107.9, I'm Gio Palermo.